48 past the hour, a series of explosions rocked Kyiv early this morning as Russia launched a new round of missile strikes targeting critical infrastructure. The mayor of Kyiv says part of the Ukrainian capital has been cut off from power and water supplies. The scale of the attack wasn't immediately clear, but an advisor to Ukraine's interior ministry said Russia launched 40 cruise missiles at different targets across the country. Joining us now, retired four-star Navy Admiral James Tavridis. He is NBC News and MSNBC chief international analyst and former Supreme Allied Commander of NATO. We want to talk about Ukraine, but we also want to talk about the problems that we are facing in this country in light of the attack on Paul Pelosi. But first, update us on uh, the, the state of this war mm -hmm. and how Ukraine is doing in, in light of the fact that Russia keeps coming at them. Yes, they're struggling. Yes, they're dragging anybody in to, to force them to fight. But these, these are impactful attacks. Indeed, they are. And um, let's uh, sort of stipulate that Putin if he can't take it, if he can't take Ukraine, he's going to break it. Mm. That's kind of his philosophy is destroy it, you know, like the way Sauron went after the Shire at the end of Lord of the Rings. Um, and he will continue striking. This is a card he'll continue to play. Um, in terms of where the war is right now, the Russians are still on their back foot. There's an important city called Kherson, mm -hmm. which is the gateway to Crimea. I think that will fall to the Ukrainians, and that's a good thing because it's psychologically a critically mm -hmm. important. But there's a third combatant about to enter the battle, Ukraine, Russia, and winter. Not to go all Game of Thrones on you, but winter is coming, and it will impact both sides. It will slow the military action. But I think in that winter period, unfortunately, you'll see Putin continue these long-range strikes. Our job to conclude is to provide the Ukrainians the best support we can, and in particular, enhance their air defense systems so Putin's strategy will not be successful. Clint. Yeah, Admiral, I was wondering what you thought about uh, Russia in terms of their strategy. We've been talking, you know, for six months about their ability to fight and now can they continue to fight at you know some of my research team we see russian troops showing up literally with just a bayonet they don't don't even have water drinking out of puddles yeah. what would the effect be inside russia if even through the winter russia can't really feel the military anymore you know what do, what do you see in terms of that uh, first i agree clint completely with your analysis that the the russian capability to take these 300,000 troops that they have pulled out of homeless shelters, pulled out of bars who are dead drunk, dragged off to recruiting stations. They're being told to buy their own sleeping bags, bring their own bandages with them, and as you say, have no real military capability. So as that cannon fire heats the Ukrainian war machine, I think you will see reverberations back in mm -hmm. Moscow. But again, with winter, it's going to have a slowing effect on both sides of that firing line. And, and Admiral, there's reports out just this morning that Mayor of Kyiv says that because of these latest strikes, 80 percent of the capital city right now without access to water or power, which yeah. is a real thing, especially as the weather continues to get colder. This, these terror strikes clearly are Putin's mm -hmm. M.O. going forward, trying to rattle Ukrainian resolve, as well as the Europeans and their unity to stay with Ukraine here, as we see in another report today, just how inflation is soaring across the continent. Yeah. Are you concerned here that as Putin shifts tactics, there could be some cracks in the alliance overseas? Um, I think we're going to see a little bit of creaking at both ends of the political spectrum, both here in the United States, where we've seen uh, McCarthy kind of walk a little bit away. Um, on the left side, you saw a group of progressives kind of put out a statement. They pulled it back. But you feel a little creaking to the support here. And I think similarly, Jonathan, in Europe, you're going to see um, a more stress on the political system. But my assessment, both here in the U.S. and in Europe, is that this uh, coalition will hold together, um, particularly if the Ukrainians continue, as I think they will, to be more successful on the battlefield than the Russians. One final point. Um, we haven't mentioned it, but Russia is now talking about pulling out of this grain agreement of yeah. shipping mm -hmm. grain out of Ukraine. <clears throat> They're doing that because it will damage the Ukrainian economy. They won't have assets coming in because it'll enhance the price of Russian grain, which can still be sold to those who are not honoring the sanctions. 
sanctions, and it'll put inflationary pressure in the West. See paragraph one about creating cracks in the political system. So Putin still has cards to play. David Ignatius. Uh, Admiral Stravitas, you, you spoke about Putin's efforts to break Ukraine, and they don't seem to be working. Uh, I was there several weeks ago. Boy, you'd hear nothing but defiant resolve. So my question for you is whether you think uh, it's likely or possible that Putin will seek to further escalate in significant ways, and in particular, what your own personal evaluation would be about the use of tactical nuclear weapons. Yeah, let's start with a historical analogy, um, David. Um, during World War II, Hitler's strategy was to launch air raids, try and demoralize the population. How'd that work out? As you correctly point out in Ukraine today, it simply energizes the population. It gives lift to inspirational leaders like Winston Churchill, who I think Zelensky is channeling pretty well in this moment. In terms of would Putin reach for the nuclear card, not the strategic one, not a big nuclear exchange. Look, I despise Vladimir Putin, but I'll give him this. He loves his country. He loves Russia. He doesn't mm -hmm. seek a global war that destroys Russia alongside much of the world. So would he use a tactical nuke? David, I think the chances of that have increased perhaps to 10 percent, still unacceptably high. My own evaluation is he will not choose to do that simply because it would swing many nations that are still kind of in the middle on this um, over against Putin. That would be disastrous for his economy. I don't look for the use of a nuclear weapon, David. All right, Admiral, stay with us. And Clint Watts, thank you very much uh, for being on this morning. Still